Let's all stand and begin our service this morning. Amen, amen. Praise God. So thankful to see everyone in the house this morning. I want to read the lyrics of a song right quick, just a few verses. But C.C. Winan sings a song called The Goodness of God. And it's probably one of my most favorite songs. It says, I have loved you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good to me. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. And in the darkest night, you are closed like no other. I've known you as a father, and I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. How many can testify of that this morning? He has been so, so good to me. Can we just praise him and just lift him up this morning?
Come on, why don't we just praise him a moment? Come on, let the fruit of your lips praise him this morning. Come on, if he's been good to you, why don't you lift up your voice? Come on, if he's been faithful through the night, why don't you lift up your voice this morning? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That song says, Hell's lost another one. I am free. It's really exactly what I feel this morning. I feel just such a deep sense of peace in this place this morning. Thing, Jesus said, I, I give my peace on you, but I don't give it as the world gives. He gives a peace that is so much better than you can find anywhere in this world. There's nothing like Jesus. I tell you right now, there's nothing that can fill you the way that Jesus can fill you. When His Spirit comes into you, Hallelujah. He's going to bring joy this morning. He's going to bring joy. Hallelujah. If we can get our ways to give on the board. We have Giveify, PayPal available at riverbendpentecostals.com. Cash and checks can be mailed to Riverbend Pentecostals P.O. Box 477, New Madrid, Missouri 63869. We have pans for offering and pans for tithing and you can text I, was, I almost got it memorized I was almost ready you can text to give at 8 833-883-9311 we're better together come on somebody come on I'm going to praise them we're better together hallelujah now if we say this prayer with the faith that Brother Derek prays with, we're going to see some things happen. That's a little inside joke. Terrence and I went hunting yesterday and joking around. Terrence said, we need prayer that some deer will move. And Brother Derek said, I'm going to pray the deer just bed down. And, and that's what happens. So if we pray with the faith that Brother Derek has this morning, I believe God's going to move in this place. I say that a little jokingly, but... I'm going to pray this in faith, believing that God's going to take care of me, my family, that this church, I believe there's going to be souls won because of this. And if you believe that, will you say this with me this morning? Upon the authority of your word, I have given, and it shall be given unto me, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I am a tither, and I give my offerings. I bring them today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished and royalties received. My whole family saved and serving God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in, and I am blessed going out, and all that I do will prosper in Jesus' name. Amen.
thankful to be here. Let's just praise the Lord a little bit right now. There's a lot of testimonies in this house. The Bible says we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimonies. It's through our testimonies can we speak into somebody's life and change it just by the way that we used to be. I was riding Friday on the way home from work and I started to look around me. Leaves was changing on the trees. Grass was changing. Crops coming out of the field. We were going into a new season. And I started to think, everything changes in life. Our circumstances, our decisions, our ambitions, everything changes. But the one that stays the same from the beginning to the end. Hebrews 13 and 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. No matter your circumstances, no matter what you left with Sunday, last Sunday, you can get it here today because he's the same, church. He can heal you at any given time. You just got to step out in faith and know that he is the one that we call upon in time of need. And he's the one that's going to change everything in our life. And I'm thankful that I know his name. And his name is Jesus. And he's shedding his blood for us. There's a lot of needs to be in this house that needs to be met today. And we're going to do it through prayer. So let's just pray. If you know someone that needs a touch in their body, if you know someone needs God in their life, stand in the gap for somebody and be in prayer. So let's just pray today that the Lord will move in the ways that we need him to move. Lord, we just love you and we're thankful that we are able to meet you in this place today. Your spirit is here, and Lord, we're willing and able to let you be king of our lives, Lord. We need you to change everything in our lives, all of our circumstances, everything that causes us to be out of alignment with you, Lord. Lord, I pray that your blood just washes over us today. You cleanse us from all imperfections, oh God. Lord, speak into our life, Lord, just change, move in us, oh God. Lord, bring things to the surface where we can get them out today, God. Lord, I just pray that you're going to give you all, oh God.
Y'all know how I feel what that song sings, the, the lyrics of that song. The, have you tried Jesus? Move the immovable. Break the unbreakable. Man, he can do it. There ain't a situation out there. There's a reason that it's the impossible, the immovable, the unbreakable, the unfathomable, the unthinkable. Every bit of it. God, nothing's too big for God. Nothing he can't do in your life. Is there anybody, do we just have a whole lot of no situations or no a lot of perfect people? I know there's some problems out there. I know there's some immovable situations. I know there's some unthinkable problems. I know there's some people that are battling some unthinkable things. And we're here today with a, a God that can take, take that and move it. That, that can take that and take it away from you. Get it out of your life. Move it out of your path. He can do it for you right here. You can leave here today changed. You can leave here today. The situation that you came here with, when you walk out, it's gone. You go to work, that situation can be taken care of. You go back to the doctor, that, that report can be good. Amen? That cancer can be gone. Brother Ronnie, I'm just dumb enough to believe it. I'm just young enough to know that God can do it. I've seen just enough things to know that my God can still heal, that my God can still deliver, that my God can still make a way out of no way. I still believe in the breakthrough. Amen. I believe in a life change. Hallelujah. Amen. And I love that God's here with us in this place today. Amen. You can go ahead and be seated this, this morning. Brother Christian looked at me this morning at Elements and said, man, that's a lot of pages. But I told him, I said, I like to make my words real big, so don't worry, because I can't see. So I got a lot of pages, but I ain't got a lot of notes. Um, I want to kind of tell y'all a story real quick. I, it's going to be a little different, but I, wanna, I just want to tell y'all a story kind of where I got my message from. Uh, it's a hunting story. A few years back, which I, going back again, I, it's a hunting story, but I, I've always prayed and I look for different ways. That's one thing I love about growth. God will speak to you no matter what you're doing. And one thing I love about hunting, Brother Blake, is you know how much, a lot of y'all that hunt know what I'm talking about, but God will speak to me continuously through every kind of different hunt that I have. It's like he tells me something new about it. But this particular hunt, I was turkey hunting a few years back with a buddy of mine, and uh, I almost didn't even tell this today, but I feel like I need to. A few years back, I was turkey hunting with him, and we had a pretty big backwater. It was just a tough spring, a lot of, couldn't really get on any turkeys or anything, and um, I found some turkeys the day before, just the water had them hung up. They went over on the other side of the the water. Well, me and him went back the next morning, the second to last day of season, and um, we got back there. Turkey started gobbling, and uh, they were over top of the water. They flew off in the same spot that they were, and he looked over at me, and he said something to me. He said, well, he said, how bad do you want to kill a turkey? And I said, well, I want to kill one pretty bad except the last couple days. He said, well, we're going to have to get wet. And this morning, this particular morning, we had a, it's still early in the spring, we had a cold front. It got down into the 30s that day. So it was pretty cold. And uh, anyways, I told him, I said, well, let's just go for it. We went to wading about a quarter mile through chest deep water to get to this ridge that they were on back there. And the, the, whole, the whole deal is, we were talking about risk this morning. I was inside, I was just constantly fearful because I knew I could be doing every bit of this for nothing. And that's the way it happens a lot when you're hunting. I knew that I could be getting wet, cold, miserable for no reason. And it's just going to be a terrible day. But there's that little bit of what if. But anyways, we made it through the water. We got over to the ridge. And I no longer, we were dumping the water out of our boots. I mean, it don't happen like this always. But we were dumping the water out of our boots and one struck off out there on his own. And for those of you that don't turkey hunt, that means when one's gobbling on his own, that means you can pretty well work him. 
We went to work, and even about 20 or 30 minutes later, I killed him. And the whole point of the story is that turkey wasn't my biggest turkey. It wasn't no crazy, special, double-bearded thing that I talk about all the time. But it's the most important one that I've killed because of how I killed it. And, and I, I say that to say this. It meant more to me after the fact when I killed it because of what I went through. This entire message, I'm not even really getting into it yet. But because of what I, what I waited through to get to that bird, it made it mean more. So when, when somebody kills a turkey, don't you start judging how small it is or what they did because you don't know what they went through to get it. When somebody gets up here and preaches something, don't you try to start talking about what they did because you don't know what they went through to have that message. When somebody has a testimony, don't you shoot them down because you don't know what they went through to have that testimony. When somebody gets up here and dances and looks silly, don't you laugh at them because you don't know why they dance, Brother Terrence. You don't know why they do what they do because you don't know what they waited through. You don't know the hell that they went through. You don't know the fire that they walked through to have what they had. Amen. And, that, and I'm going to get to the title now because that brings me to my title. I'm going to preach on a message called, It Means More Now. Now I'm going to get to my title text. I told y'all it's going to be just a little bit different, but I wanted to lay that foundation and let everybody know because I'm telling you, there's more coming forward. Amen? What's coming is going to be better than where you've been. I'm going to go to uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 11. And I'm going to kind of read through this entire story, but it ain't a very long one. But everybody knows this for the most part. To illustrate the point further, Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings and moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all of his money and wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land. And he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him. And the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the pods that he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, At home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. And this is where he starts practicing what he's going to say to his father. He said, I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And the Bible says, and went, while he was a, still a long way off, his father saw him coming. That'll preach right there. Filled with love and compassion, what we just talked about this morning. He ran to his son, embraced him, and he kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said right then, quick, to his servants, quick. Bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet and go kill that calf we've been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast for his son. This son of mine was dead and now he has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. And meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house. And asked one of the servants what was going on. And they said, your, fa your brother is back, he was told. And your father was, has killed the fatted calf. We are celebrating because, his, because of his safe return. The older brother was angry and wouldn't go in. His father came out and he begged him. But he replied, all these years I've slaved for you and never once refused to do a single thing that you told me to do. And in all that time you never gave me even one young goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours come back after squandering your money on prostitutes, notice he said the son of yours. He didn't say your bro my brother. He said when this son of yours came back squandering his money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fatted calf. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost, but now he is found. One thing I want to talk about first, and, and I'm going to kind of lay a little bit of a foundation here before I get into the second part. But I said from the beginning, the second is better than the first. Amen? 
So I'm going to say one thing that we tend to forget about the pig pen is that the son found that when the son found itself in the pig pen, it wasn't just a bad situation, Brother Terrence. It wasn't just something that he got dealt. It wasn't a tough hand of life because we do have ups and downs. That's just a fact of life. This wasn't one of those. He, what he found himself in was his own mess. He brought every bit of this stink and filth, and he brought this situation on himself. Sometimes the junk that we go through isn't just a valley. It isn't just a, a, a thing of life that we go through, but it's our own, just our own stinking fault, being point blank. It's all throughout the Bible, and it's still happening now. You can, take, you can go back and look at Samson. You can look at David. You can look at uh, Jacob. And, uh, so many of them. Every one of them messed up, and it was their own fault. We say, I, I don't know what I, I've been having to go through this. I don't know why I'm in this mess. And some of the time, it's because we took our blessing and just wasted it. Amen. I, I feel like the Lord sometimes looks at us and just like, come on, idiot, just get up and act right. Just do right. You know what to do, just do right. We think that we can do everything on our own. They'll, they'll see what I'm made of. Like I said, Samson. I, I always go back to Samson whenever I talk about that because the reason, you know, Dad talked about this morning being trusted with a miracle. Samson seen miracle after miracle after miracle, and eventually he wasn't able to be trusted with it because he thought that power lied within itself. But that just shows you right there the love of Jesus, what he has for us. Um, just like I said last Sunday, and we go right back to love. It, it's, I mean, there's so many confirmations when you start growing, Uncle Shannon. You talk about... I had this message and didn't even know what I, exactly if it was the right thing or anything and go to that rally last week and Brother Scott that was preaching. If you missed, you missed out, by the way, if you didn't go. I could have sat there and just kept listening to him probably all night. It, it was an awesome message. You don't, I'll tell you this, you don't get that kind of message very often because people like that, that have been through everything like that and seen some things and you don't get to hear them very often, so you got to take advantage of it. But he said something at the end that just confirmed this message come in here this morning and they just about hit on everything I'm going to preach when we're talking in the men's group. Then we come to elements and they talk about love. But just like I mentioned last week, I kind of started to preach my own message last week when I got up here, but I want to go back to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He knew that you was going to be a mess up. He knew that you was going to uh, mess up so many times before you get right, and he died for you anyways. He knew that you was going to go through some pits, that you was going to be in the pig pen, Brother Terrence. He knew that you was just going to be low down sometimes, Brother David, that you was going to fall short. And he said, I'm going to die for you anyways. I'm going to go up on the cross and take the pain anyways. And I want to take it even a step forward. Dad said it. But not only did he die for your mess ups, not only did he die for the things that when you fall short, but he died for your upcomings. He died for your comeback. He died for the blessings that are to come. He died for your anointing. He died for your ministry. He died for your family. He died for you. Like I said, don't think that I'm sitting here talking about everybody's a mess up, but really we can all testify that we are. I'm right there with you. We all are. We're human. We fell short. But I'm telling you, I'm setting you up for a comeback. You are going to come back from whatever situation you're in. You are going to come back from the pit of hell. You are going to come up out of that valley and get on the mountaintop. That fire that you've been walking through, you're going to see the other side. And not only are you going to see the other side, Brother Blake, but there's going to be people see you come out of it. And they're going to say, hey, if he can do it, so can I. This brother come walking out of the fire, fine. He ain't flaming. He ain't hurt. He ain't burned up. So I can make it too. Amen. You spent a lifetime at being addicted. You spent a lifetime at being no good. You spent a lifetime of not providing what you know you can. But you can leave this place changed today in an instant. You can leave this place. I know we sometimes get over it. Like we can say that over and over. And it's like we don't really believe it, Brother Ronnie. But I've seen it happen too many times. You can lay your problems at this altar. And when you go back, it is completely taken care of. Even if the situation ain't fixed, your life can be healed. Your heart can be healed. That's up to you. Come on. The miracle may be up to God. The healing may be up to God. But you can leave this place changed and it's up to you. God's never turned away a willing heart. He's never turned somebody away that wants to repent, Sister Crystal. 
He's never turned somebody away that wants to come out of the pig pen. The Bible says when the brother, when the son was on his way, the father seen him from a far ways off. When he was looking for him, I'm telling somebody, the father's looking for you. I'm telling somebody that's listening online that's a prodigal. I, I know that you're sitting at home and you don't think nobody's watching. But I'm telling you, God is looking for you. God is watching the road. You are on your way back. You ain't messed up too bad. You have not done too many bad things. You ain't, you ain't too depressed. You ain't had too many anxieties. You haven't had too many stresses. I'm telling you, if you're here today, you can leave this place changed. And to prove it, I'm going to go to Acts chapter 9 and verse 1 through 6. Brother Ronnie hit on this too this morning, the exact story. Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on his mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, the Lord ever had to say your name twice? Hey Amen, he, he ain't, you ain't listening on the first time. Why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what to do. Like I said, I'm setting you up for a comeback. We're going to skip ahead now to verse 19. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days, and immediately, somebody say immediately, immediately. he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogue saying he is indeed the son of God. Yeah. I'm here to tell somebody this man was on his way to Damascus to kill. Yeah. He was on his way to kill. And God didn't change his destination. He still went to the same place that he was on his way to kill Uncle Shannon. But I'm telling you what he was going to do changed. He, became, he went from a killer to a preacher. Yeah. Come on, there ain't nothing my God can't do. I'm here to tell somebody... If he can take a killer and turn him into a preacher, what makes you think that he can't take you and turn you into what he wants you to be? Brother Blake, he can take a sinner, a low-down sinner. He can take a prodigal that's been laying in the pit for years. Come on, that prodigal may have been there for 30, 40, 50 years. We don't know how long it was, but he can take you, and he can turn you straight around. Immediately, the Bible says, immediately, in an instant, you can leave this place changed. In an instant, you can leave this place a preacher. In an instant, you can be a minister of the gospel. In an instant, you can be a prayer warrior. In an instant, I don't care what you've been through. I don't care how bad you've been. I don't care what you've said about the church. I don't care how bad you've bashed the preacher. I don't care how many times you've not given when you should have. I don't care how many times he spoke to you and you didn't listen. I don't care how many times you didn't pray for such and such. I don't care how many times you got a chance. God can do it immediately. Amen. He can do it immediately. Now I kind of want to go back now. Back to the Luke 15 and 20. Verse number uh, 15 and 20 and through 22. The Bible says, So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. Like I said, remember, I'm setting you up for a comeback. No matter how messy your pig pen is, no matter how long you've been there, you're welcome back into the Father's house. Amen. Not only are you welcome back, Brother Larry, but there's a party awaiting Amen. There's, some, there's, a, there's a celebration that's about to take place. Come on, not only are you going to be able to get back to where you were, but you can go farther forward. Amen. You can go farther forward than you ever thought you could. You may think that you can just be a servant, but I'm here to tell you, you can be a man of God. You may think you can just be a, a helper, that you can just come and be on the cleaning team, that you can just come and scrub commodes, that you can just come and do the little things. But I'm here to tell somebody, you can be what God wants you to be. 
And not only that, but it means more now. Amen. It means more now that you've been through that pen. It means more now that you've come through the fire. It means more now that you've waded the water. It means more now that you've been to hell and back. Come on, you can't have a testimony without a test. Amen. The son, uh, the son had practiced what he was going to say. I told dad this the other day. He, he said, if I can only be a servant, if I can just be a servant in the house, <clears throat> can you take me back to verse uh, tra- uh, 18, Sister Scarlet? <laughs> I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you. Keep going. And I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. Keep on going. So he returned home to his father, and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. Keep going. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Check out this next part. He didn't even get to finish. He had practiced. He had talked about all these things he was going to say. And, he, and then when he got to the part about being a servant, he, he said, I was, if I can just be a servant. He didn't even get to say it. The father said, quick. The father cut him off. Soon as he was giving his speech, soon as he was going about it saying, Lord, if I can just be a servant. God, God, the father said, quick. He talked to his servant. Whenever the, the son said, if I can just be a servant, the father said to the other servant, why don't you come, go ahead and go get the ring. Go get the, the, the fatted calf. We're about to have a celebration. I'm here to tell somebody God loves you so much that you don't have to get where you're going. He's going to cut you off. He's going to meet you halfway. Come on, if you'll go to an altar, he'll meet you in the aisle. If you'll get up and be on your way, he'll meet you halfway. You ain't got to make it. You ain't got to get there. You ain't got to be clean. God said, I'm going to meet you halfway. I don't care if you want to just be a servant. I'm going to tell my servants to get ready when you talk. He cut him off. Didn't even let him finish. If you'll make up your mind, God's going to meet you right there. You don't have to be clean. You ain't got to be whole. You ain't got to be ready. Come on, we just sang about the immovable, the unbreakable, the uncleanable. Amen? What you've went through makes where you are now mean more than if it came easy. Amen? Come on, you've got a past. You've got a story. You've got a testimony. We've got to quit trying to forget about it and start testifying about it. There's somebody out there. Come on, there's somebody out there that's watching what you've been through. And they're saying, if I can do it, then you, if you can do it, I can do it too. Somebody is checking this out. Come on, the Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, Brother Terrence, it's time to start being the church. Because the church is up on a city of a hill that cannot be hid. I'm telling you, there's a revival. There is a people watching. Come on, God's doing Brother Massey prophesied about it. There is a magnetic draw that is happening in this church, in this community. We're seeing it in recovery. We're seeing it in ministry. We're seeing it in everything that we do. God's doing something great. Somebody needs to hear that having a scar ain't a bad thing. Your comeback is going to be greater because of your setback. What you've been through now just makes where you are mean more. I also wanted to say, uh, I didn't even think about this till Brother Terrence was leading prayer a while ago. <laughs> the other day I had to take a drive out toward Gideon and seen a lot of farms out there, out, out that way. How many of y'all know that this is just, we, it seems like every year we got something different, but it's been a, we had a drought this year, really bad. <clears throat> and then we went from having a drought to a whole lot of rain in a short amount of time. It's not a good year for crops. But, and I know there's several different instances that could be changed and whatnot, but the reports that I'm continuing to see and hear is in a year that where we've had drought and a year where we've had flooding, both at the same time, Brother Larry, in a year where it looks like the harvest shouldn't be, everything that I'm seeing, Brother David, is harvest is better than it should have been. Come on, even the non-irrigated stuff, stuff that has no chance. People are yielding things that they never thought they'd be able to. Didn't think they were going to be able to make it through the year. But think the harvest is there. The harvest is there. And also, decomposition creates a better harvest. Come on, dead things make a harvest better. 
dead things, if it wasn't for things dying, if it wasn't for things dying and falling over, Brother Ronnie, there wouldn't be as great of a harvest. It's because of what gets put into it. It's because of what goes into it, Brother Blake, of what comes out. Brother, Brother uh, T.F. Tenney had a message, Brother Larry, something I won't ever forget. He said, don't judge the harvest if you haven't seen the seed. Come on, you don't know what's been being put into something. Don't you start judging some young man up here. Don't you start judging somebody that's worshiping that ain't got everything put together. Don't you start talking about somebody when they're stepping out in faith because you don't know what the hell that they've been through. You don't know the, the valley that they've been through. You don't know the fire that they've walked through. You don't know everything that they've been through. So don't you judge the harvest when you haven't seen the seed. I'm here to tell somebody your comeback is going to be greater because of your setback. Sister Scarlett, if you'll put up Haggai chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And this is where I got that confirmation from Brother Scott. He said, this silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Now if you'll take me to Isaiah 43 and 19. He says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm here to tell somebody that the, this house is going to be greater than the last one. I'm here to tell somebody that your new ministry is going to be better than the last one. I'm here to tell somebody, Brother Ronnie, your new testimony is going to be better than the last one. I'm going to hear, here to tell somebody your new song is going to be better than the last one. Sister Ashley, I know that only survivors hurt. But I'm here to tell you, that ain't it. It don't stop there. Not only did you make it. Not only are you standing here today. Not only did you come through the fire, Brother Larry. But there's something greater on the horizon. There's a harvest that is coming that you can't even, you can't even think. You can't, it's the unthinkable. That's where God comes in. Yes, we've been going through stuff. Yes, we've had folks messing up. Yes, we've had circumstances arise and things happen that we can't control. Yes, we've been struck with sickness. Yes, the devil's been working. But let me tell you one thing, honey. We ain't only made it through, but we've still been in revival throughout everything that the devil has thrown against us. Not only did we make it through, but we've been seeing revival. Though hell is coming against our families. We've been seeing people healed. We've been seeing the Holy Ghost being outpoured, even though hell is coming against us. Come on. I'm telling somebody, the devil can't stop. What, the de what God is doing. The devil can't stop it. And not only did we make it, but we're making it going forward strong. Come on, and if we made it through going strong and we've seen, seen revival, what do you think is going to happen when we quit having to go through it? What do you think is going to happen when we do get to the other side? What do you think is going to happen when we see the harvest? What do you think is going to happen when you start testifying? Come on, we ain't seen no kind of revival yet. Brother Ronnie, I preached about it whenever you first started coming and you ain't ever forgot it. There is a revival that is coming that we ain't even began to think. There is a revival coming of the prodigal. There is a revival coming of the new saint. There is a revival coming of the ones that nobody wants. There's a revival coming of the ones everybody wants. There's a revival showing up. If we'll just get ready. I'm here to tell somebody God's doing something. Despite what the devil thinks. Amen. I come here in the name of Jesus that speaks against depression and anxiety. I speak against stress. I speak against strife. I speak against situational problems. I speak against uh, not a lot, lot enough money to pay the bills. I speak against people going through sicknesses constantly. Can't get over little sicknesses. I speak against people battling big sicknesses against cancer. I speak against everything that the devil has thrown against us in the name of Jesus because there's power in that name. Amen. There's power. If you don't know how to pray, say in Jesus' name. If you don't know what to say, say in Jesus' name. Because I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, mountains move. In the name of Jesus, harvest rise up. In the name of Jesus, situations disappear. In the name of Jesus, the fire stops. In the name of Jesus, I'll make it through. Amen. If the music will go ahead and be heading up here. I'm here to tell somebody... The second is better than the first. Brother Johnny James 
preach the message titled, When Second is Greater Than First. I'm here to tell somebody, you're, what's coming is greater than everything you could have ever thought. Because of what you've been through. Because of the hell you've been through. Because of the fire. Because of the valley. You didn't go through that for nothing. I know that it might have been our own problems. It might have been our own mistakes that caused it. But God will take it. And he will turn it around for his good and his glory. I'm here to tell somebody if he can do it for Saul. He'll turn Saul into Paul. He'll turn a killer into a preacher. He'll turn anything into what he wants. If you will, let's stand. In closing, I want to share something else with you. For some of you sports lovers. <laughs> Anybody ever heard of the Tom Brady effect? <clears throat> Tom Brady won seven different Super Bowls during his time at quarterback. But the one that he's probably been most famous for was in 2017 against the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta had gotten out to a 28-3 commanding lead over Brady and the New England Patriots at the half. They were losing 28-3 at the half. Nobody had ever come back from a deficit this large, ever, in the history of the NFL. So it was a foregone conclusion that Atlanta would win the Super Bowl. In fact, Atlanta had a 99.8% chance of victory at that point. Brady then came out of halftime. And he led his team to a 25-point unanswered comeback to force overtime. And then at 28 to 28, and then lead his team to a 75-yard drive to win the game in overtime. And Brady also trailed in six of his seven different Super Bowls. People always refer to it as the Tom Brady effect because what they say is that no, no lead is too great. When you're at the half, no problem is too big that you can't overcome. When you're at halftime, there's nothing that's too far gone. They might have had you in the first half. You might have been gone and down and out at the first half. Come on, when we watched Rocky, Rocky was down. He said, I might, you can't beat a man that won't get down and stay down. He kept getting back up. He kept getting back up. I'm telling somebody, you might be sitting at halftime right now. You might be in the, in, the, in the lowest spot that you thought you ever could be. You might be at a 28 to 3. You might be, nobody's ever came back from something this large. No, not even Saul. Nobody's ever came back from this big of a problem. I've been, I've been battling depression. I can't get a victory over it. I've been battling a, a problem in my family, and I can't see the victory. I fasted, and I've prayed, and I can't see what God wants. But I'm telling you, there's still time for a comeback. If there's time on the clock, if there's time on the clock, God can still heal. God can still deliver. God can still make a way out of no way. We've got more to play for. It means more now. What you've been through makes it mean more now. I'm here to, I want to finish up by saying this. The second half will be better than the first. The second half of your life will be better than the first. The second half of your ministry is going to be better than the first. The second half of your marriage is going to be better than the first. The second half of your walk with God is going to be better than the first. The second wave of revival is going to be better than the first. The second house will be better than the first. The second life will be better than the first. I'm telling somebody, be born again of the water and the spirit. It's going to be better than the life you lived. Amen. The second coming of the Lord will be greater than the first. Is anybody looking forward to that day? Is anybody looking forward to when Jesus returns? I'm telling somebody, there's a bride that is making herself ready. If we'll just rise up, if we'll just rise up, they're about to sing a song right now. Greater things are coming. Greater revival is here. I'm telling somebody, if you'll just step out in faith, if you'll just say, oh, I believe in, I'm just dumb enough to believe that God can make a way out of no way. I'm just dumb enough to step out. Come on, there's call callings that are about to be answered. There's ministries that are about to be birthed. There's marriages that are about to be renewed. There's people that are about to be changed. Why don't you give your life to God right now? It means more now. Church and make us whole, ignite, transform, take us to a place we've never seen before. New God, the impossible, we see the mountains moving more. The word is unstoppable, with expectations we
seated for a few moments. The way this is designed to work is the word is preached and you receive it by faith. Now the word's going to go out and some of it's going to fall on the wayside. Some of it's going to fall, the wayside is the hard heart and the hard head. Can I get an amen from somebody? It's going to fall among the thorns. That's the cares of life. It's going to fall on stony ground. That's things hid under the surface where you can only get about that much roots. But some of it's going to fall on good ground. And that's going to bring forth fruit. Some 30, some 50, some 100 fold. We decide that. Several years ago, well, a whole lot of years ago, um, Sometimes my grandpa would pay me to go help him in the field. Now, what he didn't know, he didn't have to give me a nothing because I thought it was cool to hang out with my grandpa. But I had to go. He used to farm right here across the levee. And uh, I went and helped him pick up chunks. Has anybody ever picked up chunks before? I found out right quick that I didn't want picking up chunks to be my number one J-O-B. Until you've ever grabbed a hold of a piece of tin that's about this big, and you pick it up and you stretch it and it flops over and then it gets to be about this big, and you dig and you push and then you pull it up finally and it's a whole sheet of tin. You pick up tires and you pick up batteries and you pick up stumps and you pick up sacks of trash people threw out. If you're going to receive the word on good ground, you're going to have to pick up some chunks before the word goes out. We have got to stop showing up to service expecting what happens at service to fix all our problems. There's going to have to be some preparation before you come. That's why the psalmist said, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praises because he came with faith. And the seed can fall on good ground. I will stand and go on record for the second time today. I am not happy just having good church. Jesus Christ did not die so we could just have good church. He died so lives could be transformed. And how does that happen? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Thank you for coming today. We got just uh, something we're going to do and they won't take up a whole lot of your time, but, uh, it's a beautiful thing, and uh, I'd like for Kayla and her children to come up here. We've got some seats for you. Sister Kayla has asked for us to dedicate her children today, all three of the little babies, Harmony and Logan, and the new one she snuck off and had. I knew she was expecting, and then she showed up here with a baby, and I didn't know how that came about so fast. But, uh, And his name is Preston. And she may need some help. Harmony, get you a seat right there, sweet girl. Sit down in one of them seats. Yay, that's what I'm talking about. Logan been asleep. Oh, he's got his shoes on. He don't have to have shoes on up here. But this is 1 Samuel chapter number 1 and chapter number 2. We find where Hannah wanted a child, and she promised the Lord that if he gave her a baby, she would give him back. Y'all remember that? 
This is, this is a powerful act of faith. And uh, we're going to pray for Kayla. And uh, this little gal works really, really hard to be a good mama. She does. And I'm going to try to go quick because Cotton Top here is not going to want to sit there long. And y'all know what Whistle Bridges will be doing. She'll be over dancing directly. But Kayla asked me about dedicating her children to the Lord. And there's really not a higher honor, more honorable thing than a parent can do is to tell the Lord they're yours anyway. So we're going to pray real quickly. And we're going to pray for Kayla and ask that you all pray with us. And uh, that's okay. He's not hurting nothing. He's not hurting nothing. He needs to know. Let me tell you something. There's a whole lot of folks sitting back there. I wish was up at the front hollered. <laughs> yeah, he's okay. He's all right. As long as he don't get down. And then, But we're going to pray for Kayla. I want you to pray with me. She, she needs the Lord to do some things in her life. She needs the Lord to answer some prayers in her life. So let's pray for her together. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Kayla. This mother of three children, God, they're all three blessings from heaven. They all three are created in your image and likeness. I pray you'll give her the wisdom, the strength, the knowledge. I pray you'll give her a path to follow into complete order where she can do what you would have her to do. I pray you'll bless her life, her home. I pray you'll bless her efforts. Those things that she worked so hard to do, God, I pray that you'll bless this mama as she tries to raise her children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. I pray these blessings on her in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for Harmony. This is a big sister. Here, he's all right. We'll get him back up here. He's all right. We're going to pray for Harmony right now. I want you to pray with us. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray for this baby girl. She loves you. She loves to worship. She loves everything that you have for her. She loves coming to church. I pray that that doesn't soon in. I pray, God, that you'll let her grow up as a little girl who matures into an adult that lives you and lives for you and serves you. I pray for harmony, God. I pray, Lord, that she continues to like to look pretty when she comes to church. I pray, God, that you continue to bless her and help her to grow in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come here. This is Logan. Say hi, ever. Say hi, everybody. Doesn't he look pretty today? Yeah. You gonna sit by your mama for just a minute? Yeah, buddy. We're gonna pray for Logan. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray for this baby. I pray God that you'll give him good health. I pray that you'll bless his mind, his body, his his heart to live for you and to serve you. I pray blessings upon little Logan. And let's pray for baby Preston right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, this brand new baby, God, I pray that you keep your hand upon him. I pray, Lord, that you'll let his mama be a blessing to him, his sister and his brother. I pray, Lord, every aspect of his home life will be blessed. Praise, him. Praise you for this little miracle. And I pray, God, that you'll let him be exactly what his mama needs, what his family needs to be complete. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We do this, we don't always do it the same way, but I bought these, these little blankets for your babies. And in case you didn't know, Harmony gets the girly one. But these, these we've anointed them and prayed over them. And uh, so, they're, they're not just soft and pretty. He's okay. He's all right. He can't do nothing that we can't fix. But uh, we anointed and prayed over these blankets. There's one for Logan and one for Preston. But I, I, I always look for something a little unique for each family. And these, um, these blankies glow in the dark. And I just felt like that the Lord dropped these in my lap because... That's what these babies are, is they glow in the dark. And it's a dark world we live in, but the Lord also wants to remind them that he's there with them. 
and the darkness can't drown out the light. So, so thank you for praying with us, and uh, and uh, thank you for doing this and for allowing us to be a part of it. Hold on, hot shot. Hold on. But uh, um, keep them with them. Let them have them. And here, just for one more second, I'm going to go in like Zoom mode. Brother Richard, get ready. And I also bought him a little book. This is for Preston. This baby's first Bible. Bible stories. And then, then I bought, let's see, I wrote them. You'll have to read it to them because they can't read yet. But this is Logan's book. And then Harmony. Pastor bought you 100 favorite Bible verses for my mommy to read to me. So, can we thank the Lord for what Kayla's done today? Come on, let's just keep that going for a minute. There's miracles that have taken place in the house of the Lord today. This is a miracle sitting right here. Sister Kayla is going to be able to go forward out of this place today with confidence knowing that God has his hand on our kids and on her family. And Brother Tripp, we want to thank you for the word today and what you've instilled in us today as you preach the word across this pulpit. You know, you and I both work in the same field. and I don't know if you heard, but a couple months ago, we got word that a new world record was set in some unfavorable conditions down in South Georgia. We had drought, then we had floods, we had trouble getting fertilizer, but there was a farmer down there. He had a 60 acre plot of soybeans. When he harvested them, he averaged 206.8 bushels to the acre. That is unheard of. Brother Tripp, sometimes it ain't always like we want it to be, but when we go through some trying times, sometimes we come out on the other side better than we would if it would have been easy. They say that if the mountain was slick, we'd never be able to get to the top, but you got to have some jagged edges. you got to have something you can grab hold of, something that makes it just a little bit harder to climb so that you can get to the top, so that you can get to the other side. And whenever you get there, you can look back on what I came through. And it means just a little bit more, Brother Tripp. Thank you for that word. But we've got a few announcements before we get out of here today. You can all be seated if you'd like for just a few more moments. But we've got men's prayer tomorrow night at 6.30. Church cleaning team this week is team number five. That's Sister Casey and Sister Carly. And if you'd like to have the Sunday bulletin emailed to you every week, please give Sister Amanda your email address. And also we've got trunk or treat coming up, so please be bringing candy. That's going to be on October 31st in the Family Center from 5 to 8, and also if you'd like to have a booth or still time, just let Sister Amanda know that you want to have one and the idea that you have. We've got the Sages Ministries potluck meeting. It's going to be on Saturday, October the 14th at 5. That's for anyone ages 55 and up. And also, we're going to be doing a little evangelizing. Our pastor's going to get to go out, and he's going to be preaching at New Bethel in Portageville. It's going to be on Friday night, October the 20th at 7 p.m. And our praise team is also going to be there doing some music. So please, everybody that will, come and join us there. And then also we have a men's wild game cook-up that's going on at the Bernie Church on November the 6th. It's potluck, so bring your favorite dish and let Pastor know if you plan on going. That's all the announcements that we have today. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries in the crowd today? I know we had one. Meredith and I have been married for nine years now. I forgot the money. I had to text her while I go and say, hey, get us some change. Oh, come here. Come here. You got to make your Paul proud. Stand up here and let everybody look at you. And we're going to get sang to
Amanda, I don't know if that marriage class you had yesterday did any good. She just told me that she was mad at me and that she's embarrassed. And I'm probably going to be in the doghouse for a little while. But you know what? I, I'm sorry. It's my fault. Uh, all right. We could all stand in the house this morning. We get to leave the church on a happy note. We get to go out into the world after we leave here and we get to take the word with us. We get to be an example. We get to be a light in the darkness. So let's go out of this place and let's change the world this week, church. God, we just want to ask that you would please go with us, Lord. We want to thank you for what we've heard. Thank you for this day, Lord. And thank you for everybody that's here. And we just want to pray, God, that you won't let us soon forget what we've heard today and that we can go out into this world and be life changers, Lord. God, that we can live as an example and we can help somebody this week. We just thank you for everything that we've heard and pray that you'll just go with us. In Jesus' name, amen.